Jsou tu let's explore this thermal camera, donated by Top Don. Big thanks for the donation and let's take a look at it. This one is a handheld thermal camera, a standalone unit, unlike the one from Infiray, which plugs into a phone. And let's see what does the box say. 256 by 192 high resolution IR camera, 2.8 inch screen from minus 22 plus 350 degrees Celsius. Of course you can get the images to your PC and you can even record the videos with this one. Here's again the resolution, the field of view, 2 degrees Celsius accuracy. Here the working temperature, quite a big battery and the storage capacity for the pictures and videos. And now let's take a look at it. Here is the protective case for it, very nice. And here the camera, some charger for it. Nice. And some manuals and there's the memory card for it, so it's not an internal memory I guess. Calibration certificate here, product certificate, and probably the manual which nobody reads. And the USB cable, USB-C, and that's it. So let's try to test it now. Here is the memory card, which I will insert later. Here is the display and some buttons. Here is some trigger, some LEDs, the camera, and what's the other hole, and the USB connection, and the memory card goes here. Can be mounted on a tripod, and let's try to power it. A long press, probably, and it's turning on. Starting up and it should be running now. Nice. There's the temperature scale here, the temperature in the center, maximum, minimum, the battery indicator. And now, of course, instead of reading the manual, the button pressing time. The center of this controller, center spot can be turned off, hot spot. Cold spot, turn off or on. All spots disappear. Turn them back on. It's gonna light up the flashlight. The LEDs. And that's the LEDs. No SD card. This probably displays the stored images or videos. Palette. White hot. The hottest is the brightest. Black hot. The darkest is the hottest. Iron. This is probably the most well known palette for thermal cameras. And rainbow. Which is sort of confusing because it might not be completely obvious which color is the hottest. I prefer this one. And some settings. Measurement parameter, emissivity, and it's probably the ambient temperature, distance, temperature scale, two different ranges, some alert for high and low temperature, photo setting, photo auto save. Temperature unit, of course, degree Celsius, date, language, a lot of languages to choose from here, display brightness, auto power off, system setting, device information, Factory reset, format card, USB mode. It can run in a USB mode connected to a computer. And that's it. Now let's try to put the SD card in it or micro SD or whatever it is. Does it go this way or this way? Probably this way. And now I should be able to use this trigger to take pictures and store them on a card. Pressing it. Photo finished. And pressing this, 
and there are the pictures saved and can I record the video? Is it too long? Press? Yes. Now it's recording the video. And stopping it. I can save it. Or not. And of course everybody is screaming. I should show some thermal images of something more interesting than my fingers. So let's take a look at this big old bench power supply from 83. I'm loading one of the outputs using this lamp and here is it from the other side. And now let's make a thermal image of it. And now looking from the back and not sure if the camera records audio. If it doesn't I will record the audio using the other camera and you can see the power supply from the back and here is the heat sink of the section that's loaded and it's getting hot mostly here because the loaded section has its transistor here the other heat sink is not hot because these sections are not loaded let's take a look from the side of it see here several fuses and you can see one is hot this is the one for the loaded section here's the transformer winding getting a bit hot some power resistors here quite hot and the control boards some component is hot on the control boards and progressing to the front panel you can see the loading lamp here getting hot and on the front panel you can see the tungsten lamps getting hot this is old, it's using tungsten lamps as indicators so they actually are visibly hot in the thermal camera the rest of the panel doesn't seem to be too hot these two terminals for the connection are getting a bit hot some contact resistance here definitely looking from the top here are the control boards one of them doesn't seem to be too hot the other ones hotter again the resistors we already have seen and some loading resistors here and here for the two adjustable sections of the power supply and the loaded one seems to have a lower voltage on the main capacitor so the loading resistor is less hot than the non-loaded section the cables are getting slightly warm here visibly and from the other side again some components maybe the lamp here some component there is quite a hot resistor on this board and here you can see out of these 12 diodes three bridge rectifiers that this group of four is hot the other two groups are not hot because the other sections of the power supply are not loaded now let's quickly unplug it and pull the boards out one board and and here you can see two bloody hot resistors also some zeners, big metal ones are getting a bit hot the rest of it isn't very hot some resistors here are a bit hot and there is one hot resistor that's the control board for one of the adjustable sections here is the non-adjustable board not much of it hot other than some resistor here Let's pull out the last board and here is the last board. Some slightly hot current sensing resistors here, several in parallel. The transistors themselves probably don't look hot because the surface is shiny for infrared. It doesn't record audio but this seems to be normal for all thermal cameras. The other one also doesn't record any audio. I always edit in the audio from the normal camera. And of course this handheld camera has several advantages over this plug-in camera for phones. It fits into your hand much better, it's much more convenient, looks much more sturdy, more professional. It's definitely better for use in a field. And it's a completely standalone unit, not dependent on a phone, where you have to have the right port to fit the camera in, and the right operating system, and download the application for it, and everything being compatible and these struggles. But it also has some downsides, for example it doesn't come with the macro lens like the other one. This one has this macro lens which just 
magnetically go on and you can take thermal macro pictures of tiny circuit boards for example. This one is good for bigger things like heat losses of buildings, temperatures of big machines, engines and so on. Maybe also for bigger circuit boards but definitely not for diagnosing tiny circuit boards with SMD components. And this one actually includes the temperature readings into both pictures and videos. But this one for some reason includes the temperature readings just into the pictures but not into the videos. For example here you can see a thermal video of my laptop and there is no temperature reading. On the other hand the still picture does include the temperature readings. Or maybe I'm just doing something wrong. And this model TC004 doesn't have a built-in visible camera. But there is a higher model TC005 which does have a visible camera built-in and I guess this one has the other hole just because it shares the same plastic housing with the higher model. If you want a built-in visible camera choose TC005. And of course just like with the other thermal camera let's make a thermal video of the dog. And also my Nixie clock with TTL chips in it, again for comparison. So that's it and if you like my videos please consider supporting my channel on Patreon using the thanks button and subscribing. And a big thanks to all of you who already support me.